Okay. I figured we'd have some issues. No, I don't want that one. Come back. Oh, we'll put that one there then. Okay, we're back. Yes, we're back. I'm back. Oh, dear. Now, what, what happened then? I thought, oh, I'll just turn the lights out and see if this works. And when I, <laughs> I turn the lights out, I turn all the power out as well. Oh, I've lost the camera screen up there. Wait a minute. Oh, no, wait a minute. Yeah, that's good. You got to get a bit of a feedback in the check, in the ticking. But I'll stop it as soon as it gets nasty. Muddy dick. There we go. Okay. Should be, should be back to what we should be. All right. Well, I, I'm going to... What can I do with that one? Um, oh, no, we can go, we can go into the... Um, we can go into... We'll go next door. We'll go in here. We'll go in the machinery shop. Here you go. All right. And then I can turn this light off in here. All right, and we'll see if this works. Hey, how cool is that? Hey, you got a little... <laughs> Try and bring you around here where it's dark. There you go. A little. Come here. We still got some stuff to work out, but there you go. A little light inside the. That's quite nice. I don't mind, and you can see, you can see the landscape in there too. Oh, there you go. Oh, there's some something new to try. Turn that off. Takes a while to slow down. Okay. All right. Enough of that. Let's get. Oh. oh. I better turn that other light on, I suppose. Did I turn it back on? I can't remember. No, I didn't. Here we go. Uh, that one. There you go. That's it. Ah, well, that's something I can work towards. <laughs> Hello again, everybody. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get into what I said I was going to do, which is... Um, And back to there. Oh, it's all learning. Hello, Trevor. Only a um, thousand more and you get Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I, I bought those from Wish. Uh, someone said to me, have you ever bought anything from Wish? I said, no. And they said, yeah, I don't know if it turns up. Well, I've got news for you. I bought something on Wish and yes, it turned up. So I was pretty happy with it. I think 50, 50 of these little... Ah, man of plate, hope you have a good stream. Good night. Good night, mate. Thanks for dropping in. Ah, uh, am I talking? I hope so. Is it frozen again or are we good? It's back. Ah, 
Yeah, I was concentrating. No sandwich camera. Oh, ba -doom boom. Oh, okay, okay. No sound on this camera? All right, I can work that out. There we go. Now you should have sound on that camera. See, there's another button I've got to push. Yeah, we're all good now. Oh, yeah, no, it's, I've got to press a PIP on switch. And then I can, we should have camera there. Yeah, I've got that happening and that happening. And I can come back there. All good. All right, first thing first, let's have a coffee. Oh, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to put a coffee in the coffee machine. I'll remember. I'll remember. I'm going to have an Ethiopian. I like them. They're not too strong. But I'm starting the flag in the afternoon. I'll have a Costa Rica. They're a bit bigger. But, uh, oh, let's go see if this one's working. There you go. That's what I'm going to have, one of those. What? And, oh, that's not playing the game either, is it? That's meant to focus automatically. Let me just have a look, see. We go there. Focus. What's going on there? Oh. I, I had a fairly short list. Oh, you gonna... no, I've got to work with it a bit more. Anyway, that's Ethiopian coffee. Um... Yeah, I've got a lot, a lot more tweaking to do, obviously. But it's getting there. And for those of you, I've got a new coffee machine down here now, those that on Twitch that hadn't seen before. I thought, why not? I drank my morning coffee 12 hours. Good on you, John. I, I had one six hours ago. Uh. <whistles> Good morning, Brian. Yeah, Costa Rica's nice, I like it. Okay, let's go. What we're going to do is build... Um, it'll most likely be over two days. A couple of reasons for that. One, we've got to wait for the glue to dry. And two, um, I want to play around with some more techo stuff. But the first box, all boxes basically are made the same to start with. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the top box first, which, you idiot. I, it's just getting used to these other cameras. There you go. Okay, I'll, I'll, I can work with this one, I don't care. Okay, so I'm going to do that middle one first, which is called the top box. Uh, yeah, I've got to work on getting that focus happening a bit better. So I'm going to do that one, and then the other boxes are made the same way, but once they've been made, there are some differences which we will go through as we go. So the first one I'm going to make by hand, uh, just using basic hand tools. So if you've got saws, if you've got band saws, drop saws, docking saws, ripping saws, whatever, use those ball means. But this one I'm going to just make it simply with a saw and very basic clamps. Where's my coffee? There you go. And um, so you make the other ones the same and then I'll show you how to do whatever later. There are precise sizes with these. I make mine out of 25 mil or one inch timber and I want it 90 mil wide. So I've got Let's see if I can match the colours here. There you go. This, uh, I use uh, Western Red Cedar. You can use basically any timber you like. And it's up to you if you want to paint it or not. These, uh, which I, um, Tim Heard sells through his website, Sugar Bag Bees, are made from Western Red Cedar. And I re-saw it on the bandsaw. So I've got rough sawn on the inside and planed on the outside. 
Apparently the bees prefer it if it's rough sawn on the inside, but it's not that critical because some of them are uh, smooth on the inside and the bees seem to love it. There's no problems. Ah, oh. uh, yeah, Western Red Cedar Junk Collector seems to be the, the best. I've got a hive out there that I've made in Spanish cedar or cigar box cedar. Um, but if you don't want to paint it, make it out of a good weather resistant um, timber, which Western Red Cedar is. I've got a top out there, which I will show you. I might continue this stream tomorrow. I'll show you the top and it has been literally, I've thrown it out in the backyard for nine months. It sat on the ground. It's been rained on. It's had 40 degree heat. It's had wind. It's had everything and it hasn't split. The top split, but I knew it would, so I was happy with that. And I've, these are the ones I make. I have modified it so it doesn't split, but these ones I'm sharing with you now, just be careful that you don't have them in full weather if, number one, they haven't been sealed, or number two, they're not of an external uh, timber. Okay, so the first measurement we need is 280 long. What you can do, you can either, oh, we will do two ways. I want this to be 90 mil, so we'll rip this down to 90 mil. And to do that, we'll get a marking gauge and a ruler. And look at that. Hey, how good. Oh, you just got to, where is it? Look at that. Look at, look at the cremor on top of that. That is just, huh, absolutely awesome. Don't want that one on, so that can turn off. I don't have a microphone in there. Okay. Now, if you want, you can go just a skerrick above um, what it is you want to finish. So mine's going to be 90. I'll do it about 91. And then I can, it allows, no, I'll go 92. It allows for any error when I'm sawing and also um, when I'm planing. I can plane it down to the mark that I want. So that's set at about 90, 92, I think. <clears throat> and I'll mark both sides. Pick the nice sides. Over the place, that one. Ah. One of my grandsons is right into native bees. Him and his wife are building a house only a couple of k's away. So, well, there you go, Trevor. I'll get to see my grandsons more often. Well, that's a good thing. Well, if they want some native beehives. What I what I do is I actually because I'm getting old, I'm going to mark those with a pencil. So I can actually, whoops, see that line and hopefully I don't follow the pencil mark where it's gone off. Whoa. There we go, sir. That's waste. This is waste here. And when you're cutting, Always cut on the waist side of the line. So there you have it. It's funny, I'm going to be using this camera more than anything else. All right, I'm going to cut on the waist side of the line. Get a better point if I can. And we'll just go down there so I know that's the line I want to be cutting along. I'm going to use a rip saw. Um, this is pretty easy stuff to cut, so I'll most likely use a 12 TPI. If it was harder, I would use a 8 TPI. <clears throat> 
But let's see how we're going. Okay. So I'll spin this one around. Oh, look at that. Isn't that a nice picky? Ba -ba -bum. All right. Where's the saw? What did I say? 12. Okay. That's what this one is. So 12, 12 TPI. That's the Lee Nelson. And I will mark across the top as well. That'll get me started. I've got to tell you, it's nice to be back in the shed making stuff. Uh. Yeah, it's, it's all this new tech stuff. All new tech, Ray. Okay, so I'm coming back. To start the cut, have a look on the other side, see how I'm going. I'm still on the waist side. Another reason <clears throat> for um, starting with the bigger boxes first is because if you fudge it up, you can make the smaller box. Whereas if you start on the smaller box and you make a mess of that, you got nowhere to go. Make sure I'm still on the waist side of that line. I'm on the waist side this side. I will <coughs> eventually work out how to do multi-shots, but at the moment, I'm sorry you're stuck with picture in picture. Try not to cut your bench. It's always a good thing. Okay. What have we got? Who was that? I'm just reading. Hey, John. No, I was saying good later, John. La da 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. It's. It's an adventure, Ray, I'll tell you. And I've got Theo to thank for this. I was sublimely happy and content in my ignorance till I went around his place. Oh, you've got to get one of these. Last little bit. Okay, that's one. And yep, that's 72, 92. I'll just cut this other one. And we'll be off and running. Uh, keep this because you use that later. If you can, it's nice to get it out of the one piece. If you can't, well, you can't, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Fire hammer, great stuff. Well, thank you. Oh, look, if I'd known I was going to be missed so much, I wouldn't have left it so long. Great to be back, though. Great to be back. And when you're cutting, don't waste your energy just going. 
What's the point? You got a 22 inch saw there, use it. I'm just going offline a bit here, so I'm bringing it back online. There you go. You can see there I, when I started I went offline and I brought it back online and the way you do that is when you're cutting you actually twist the saw in the direction you want to go and eventually the saw will come back to where it is you want it to be. Mm. <laughs> oh dear, you got a cow. Mate, at least I don't. I used to check my chisels. Chisels. Check the chisels, see how sharp they were. But I ended up looking like a, the dog with a mane, so I gave that a miss. G'day, Matthew. I am well, thank you. I hope you are too. I uh, have to run out and finish scooping the front. Okie dokie, see you in a bit, Panda. G'day, Mike. Um, well, <laughs> Mike, that's a nice Lee Nelson. There's a cup better than a generic saw. My wallet is wondering, I like, in all honesty. Here, yeah, this saw here, this is over 100 years old. This is, um, what would it be? Maybe a 14 TPI. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question, Mike. And if you really, if you really want to get into rip sawing, there's this fella here. That's a four TPI. And it's way, way too savage for that stuff. Uh, in fact, in fact, I'm getting a bit sticky. So when that happens, the old trick of a little bit of candle on the blade and you will find it will work so much nicer. These are ripsaw uh, teeth, it's a ripsaw blade as opposed to a flame cut which is generally in the cross cut saws but all good. So I'm not even breathless on this one, I was cutting something else it might be. Um. Oh, that's good to hear, Matthew. Thank you for that, Alan. Yes, you do. You can sharpen them. Bands all banded. G'day. How are you? Lovely for dropping in. Whoa, going off line there a bit. There we go. <laughs> there we are. Oh, I reckon that's it. <clears throat> Andy, we had someone in our club that only used a couple of inches of the saw. He was not happy when I gave him a saw with a handle. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, a little bit of beeswax works wonders or paraffin wax or whatever wax you've got. Wax some on. Okay. Yeah, where we go? There we go. I'm getting, I'm starting to enjoy this setup. Um, let me just. Scoop that, put that in the bin. Now I'm going to true these up. <coughs> Again, look which way the grain's going. Yeah, and you can look, you can see there, when I'm ripping, you can see I started there and then I had to pull it in and then I had a real good time. 
and then I turned it upside down and I was a little bit out again. But that's okay. That's what they make hand planes for. And that one's not too bad. A little bit of array here, but then came on and pretty close, followed that line all the way down. So we'll be using that saw again very, very shortly. Now I'm going to plane it and what you do is you look at the grain. The grain's running up that way, so I'm going to plane it this way. And me being a khaki hander, I'm going to put it in the uh, vice, the opposite way to most people. I'm just looking for a piece. spray bottle. Here you go. Got no water in it. How good is that? Got a spray bottle, no water. Wait a minute, I'll come over here and get some water. Ba -ba -da -ba. There we go. Oh, goodly. Oh, goodly, goodly. Ba -da -ba. Okay, for those of you who don't know, I'll show you. Now, this is Vice. Handles it about. 10 past, and if I lean on that timber, see how it slips, but ordinary water, put it in the vise, do the vise up to the same, about 10 o'clock, now lean on that, you can actually pick the bench up, and it will not move, great trick, there's nothing Nothing worse than planing something. Oh, I don't know how many times I've done it. You plane something, and when you push down, whoop, it just drops. So, okay, we'll just straighten this stuff up. You can hear the hit and miss happening there. Do not stress. And don't be tempted to give it a huge amount of blade. Better off just doing this slowly. And you can see this piece here that's shiny, it's starting to grow. That means we're planing that down and starting to grow here. So we're starting to get it nice and flat. And you can see I'm just rocking on the feet. You can nearly hear that coming all the way through. Got a bit of hit and miss here in the middle. And there we go. Nice long shaving. And there you have it. So what we'll do now, we'll actually plane it down to a line. For this, I will set it at 90 mil. There we go. Actually, I'll tell you what I'll use. I'll use this one because it'll give me a better mark. That one I had before is a Veritas, uh, one which I, I use a lot. But this is a custom made Colin Clinton one, which you can get from Terry Gordon. And it's, yeah, it gives me a much Better mark. Just 
this arm on the other side. So I've got, <laughs> I can't remember where these buttons are. Okay, so now I've just got to plane down to that line, which won't take very long. The good thing about marking at both sides too, you can tell if you're rocking the um, plane, because you will, you'll either take a little bit off the inside, a little bit on the outside. I don't know which, but you will do one or the other. And we might put a little bit of candle on here. Now this isn't going to get glued on the edges, so I'll put candle both sides. If I was going to glue it, I wouldn't put candle on the heel of the plane, I'll just put it on the toe. How satisfying is that noise? It's lovely, isn't it? Okay, me being left-handed, I tend to take too much off on the inside. So I'm going to put my fingers under the plane and just bring it back. That's exaggerated, but I'm just going to take some off of this edge to start with. Pretty close, I think. It's good there, a bit more there. And a couple more passes. I think I will do one pass and leave it at that. So I can even it up when uh, I actually come to fitting the box itself. Mark that off. Oh. oh, what have we got? There it, that's true, John. There's nothing like the plate, sound of a nice plate or the taste of a nice coffee, so I'm going to have some. Mm. 
Oh, oh, that's nice. Okay, where are we up to? Ah, da ba da. G'day, Andrew. I'm told if I missed you, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, I could have done that too, Mike. I should have done that, shouldn't I? Playing both boards at once. That would have saved some time. I'll, <laughs> I'll do that. You see what happens when you get old? You forget stuff. Oh, dear. Ah, that's true, Bandsaw Bandit. It is, but you still have to plane it if you want a nice edge. Even if you put it over a joint, you've got to take the machinery marks out. That's true. Andrew, how's, how's the slasher going this morning? Andrew's lovely wife had a bit of an accident with a knife the other day. Oh, dear. I'm making an air cleaner for an old furnace. I'm using my little bit of... Oh, there you go. Oh, nothing wrong with the 78. Ah, oh. that thing has a lot to answer for. I only had one lathe till I met him at one time. I, yeah, look, I agree. I agree. I should get him on the. Oh, he might be streaming at the moment. I don't know. Oh dear. Yeah, no, this is, these are Colin Clinton squares as well, which are beautiful. You can't fault. I've got a gorgeous one up in the um, other shed. Whoop, there you go there, Colin Clinton's. Absolutely. Only, only mine aren't nice and pristine and new. They're somewhat used, which is good. He likes it when people don't use his tools because it means that the warranty lasts longer. That's what he told me. Um, I, I, that was a number seven duck. Oh, Lyzone, really? It's a lovely sound, isn't it? Mm. Oh, you never know. Was that Noz? Noz Drama. Noz Drama. You never, you just keep on practicing. You'll get it. You just got to have it sharp. Mmm. Oh. Do you run a plane on the angles for those trim edges? No. Oh, um, no, well, it doesn't matter. You could use a skew if you like. I've got to get a skew block plane here somewhere. Um, yeah, look, you could use... Oh, could get used to this setup. Um, yeah, that, that's a skew. You could use, so you could skew your plane if you like, but for me, that timber is so easy to use. Just a straight is the way to do it, I think. Oh, he streams on Wednesday. Does he? Well, I should ring him up. <laughs> what are you doing, Theo? Come over here and have a coffee. Okay, so this is going to be set for 90. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty darn close down the end there. Um, these bee boxes for the native bees they work out to a volume of about eight litres and they've done a lot of work on that and found out that seems to be what the bees like. So who am I to argue with the experts? Okay, let me just play in this one. And then we'll... Cut them up. Uh, which one do you want? You want that one. There you go. Mm -hmm. G'day, Jared. Yeah, as I said, Bob and, Bob and Sue are up in the house guarding the new granddaughter. But I will say good day to them for you, John. And look, if you're a couple of millimetres out either which way, I'm sure the bees aren't going to complain. Boom. 
bum ba dum bum Pretty darn close. Not, not I mean. Okay. No! Samo, Samo, uh, Sa Sanova, no we don't. Um, they're native bees, in fact they're encourage, encouraging people to use them because the, the honeybees um, are in a bit of a situation that's Nice and square that way, so that'll do me. And that'll do. Okay. So, no, we're encouraged to keep them. Um, there are a lot of native bees. I think I think there's something like 1,700 different varieties of native bees in Australia even, I think. I could be wrong on that. Uh, but the ones I keep are Cabanaros, which are good up until or sort of up up a mid north coast of New South Wales from Queensland from about Rockhampton I think it is and then there are other varieties that are better in temperate climates colder climates what we are doing too mm, I made out help uh, Tim make a big bee hotel which is really really interesting because they uh, started Filling it the other day, the bees move in, and you've got all these different sort of bees, and it's absolutely fascinating. So I will make a bee hotel live as well. We can do that. <clears throat> so now we've got to cut. We'll do those. No, do this one first. So first of all, we've got to cut two lengths at 280 millimetres, which I think is what the book says. Let me double check. Yeah, the sides are 280 millimetres long. So if you're reasonably confident with a saw, cut it at 280. If you're not so confident with a saw, cut it at 290. That way you can clean it up. Whoop, this was a little full. You can clean it up with a block plane. But I'll take a punt. I'll, I'll back myself to 280 millimetres. It's there. Draw that with a pencil, and what I do, and a lot of other people do, so it's just not me, is here we go. We'll do it this way. Ow! They do have, I think they've got automatic zooms and everything on these. I don't know. Don't know. Get a knife. A uh, pocket knife or um, Stanley knife. What are those other things called? Exacto knife. Put the knife in the line that you want to cut. Move the square up and score down a good score. with the knife, then take a chisel, there we go. And on the waist side, this is the waist side at the moment, just run a nice, I was say a nice sharp chisel. That could do with a bit of a brighten up, I think. Mm. 
run the chisel up that cut line. So I've got a, a V going in and then a straight edge on the part. On the part I want to cut, it's straight. Then this part has a leading edge on it. I think I know what I'm going to do when I stop stream and sharpen those chisels. I'll use this saw all the way through. You can use a Japanese saw if you wish. But to start it off. The trick with sawing is, let me just back that off a bit. I've got bee boxes all over the floor. That's why I'm, it's taking me such a long while to come around. Oh. Okay. Is have your finger pointing in the direction you want to saw. So instead of a lot of people I've seen, they saw like that, your blade's going to go all over the place. You bring that pointer finger out, put it on the side of the saw, that's the direction you're going to saw, and you'll find you'll have much more stability with your sawing. Nearly through. When you're nearly through, just let the weight of the saw, don't force it, just the weight of the saw do the cutting. And here we go. There you go. All things being equal. That should be, where are we? That's fairly square that way. And I'm trying to find the camera. Pretty square that way, so I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. So I get two sides. I'll use this as the um, template, if you like. Line that up. If you're going to make a lot of these, make templates. I do. And then I don't have to measure. I just use the same template all the time. So I've marked with a knife. This is the part that I want to keep. This is the scrap part. So I will put a chisel mark up that part. Like that. Turn it around. And again, we've got a fence for the saw to sit in. Start it off at an angle and then just bring it down. Don't rush it. And there you have two sides to your box. Now we want it to be 200 wide. So the next cut depends on how thick your sides are. As I said, mine are um, 25 mil. So that's 50 mil. And if I want to have an overall width of 200, I'm going to take 200 minus 50, which is 150. So I've got to cut this one at 150. So I've just got a, a bit of, there you go, it's got a bit of dag on there. Let's see if this is, Theo was pushing a button around here before and it focused really well. There you go. So I can either take that off with a knife, which I will in this case, just tilt it up a little bit and just give it a bit of a score that comes off nicely now. Now I'm going to square this up using a block plane. Because these are butt joins, so it's got to be nice and flat. That's not good. Yeah. 
Here it is, Doc. I, I haven't. I haven't used hand salt for a while. And it's just so nice to get back into it. Okay. All right. No, there's a little bit off there. Wait a minute. La da ba da bum ba da ba dum ba dum. Okay, that'll do. So now I measure 150. We'll go. Be good when I get my string deck all set up. Okay, so 150. And obviously, if you've got the gear, just use power tools. And if you're a little bit out, as I said before. The bees won't care. But for any project, it's just nice to see if you can be accurate. Because these little ones, they're the training ground for the bigger ones. So if you get the little ones right, you'll get the big ones right. And normally I'd use a back saw on this because it's just such a little bit, but because I started with this rip saw, I shall continue. Yeah, I just got <laughs> I just gotta check some because I'm bidding on something. And I'm pretty sure it's doesn't finish till half past eight. Here we go, 18 minutes, oh that's all right. We'll be all good. Okay, this is, I'm, I'm starting to really like this setup, you know. I'm going to, which one am I on? No, I'm on that one, here we go. Sure that's square and square that way which it is and then this bit because I don't have uh, normally if I'm making a, a bee box I use a piece that is one point seven I think one meter seventy so yeah one point seven one point seven meters no one point oh seven meters And that allows me to get one box out of one piece. So there you get the continuity of the grain going all the way around. In this situation, because I'm using shorter pieces, I've got the two sides and the front are going to be the same grain pattern. And then the back one is going to be different. So I just got to cut that. So we will do this as we did before. Use this as a template. Oh. Oh, your right hand is going, oh, he's making that look complicated. Yeah. So this is a piece I want to keep. This is a waist side. Run the, run the chisel up on the waist side. Yep, yeah, these are definitely going to get sharpened. <clears throat> and cut this bit. And there you have the beginnings of the first box in your beehive. Um, there's three, 
three boxes to a complete hive if you want honey. Now to glue these together, uh, where we go? Using your <laughs> Yeah, well, that's because I'm doing everything with the one saw, duck. Get off me back. <laughs> if you want to know the difference, for those that are interested, yes, I was using a rip saw. This is a cross-cut saw. I'll see if I can give you the differences. That, I don't know if you can see, that's sort of, it's a 60-degree angle, and it comes to a... A, a different type of point. This, uh, let me show you on a, oh, where's the number 10? Can't find it, here we go. <clears throat> this is a number eight, but you can see the teeth are at 90 degrees. That's what you sharpen them at. And a rip saw will do a cross cut as well as a rip cut. But a cross-cut saw is not very good as a rip saw. The majority of saws out there are real saws, not the shark tooth saws you buy from, you know, the throwaway saws, which are shark tooth and they've been hard and you can't do anything with them. But the majority of saws you get nowadays are a rip saw. And believe me, rip saws are much easier to sharpen than flean cuts. But, okay, so to put this together, I want to make sure that I've got the rough sawn on the inside. And so that's got pattern on it. I want that to be down at the bottom. And this end has got pattern on it, so we'll have that down to the bottom. And this one, it doesn't really matter. So what we've got to do is glue it up and clamp it like that. Now, I won't glue it at the moment because I don't want to get glue all over my fingers, but I'll show you a very easy way of clamping. A lot of times, if you're doing this job, it's okay because you've got a flat end against a flat end, so you can use an F clamp or a G clamp or any sort of clamp you like and it will hold it together. But a lot of times if you've got, here we go, this is, these are mine but um, don't let that worry you. If you've got ones that are mitered, then you can get into all sorts of trouble because you can't put a clamp here, because when you clamp, which side are we on? Okay, when you clamp this side together, see what happens? It moves the end out. So I will show you the cheapest way of clamping anything, whether it's mitered or not. These are number 107 size rubber bands, elastic bands, and you put that over. That's how you've got it set up. You might be different being right-handed, I don't know, but I've got the two corners on the short ends facing me, and then the sides are opposed. And it's just then a question of sliding them in the spot, in the place. That one goes there. This one goes there. There you go. And then you can make minor adjustments just to make sure the angles are right. What I do with mine to make sure they're precise, I measure the diagonal. So I'll measure there, and I know what measurement I'm looking for. Then I'll measure it there. If the measurements are the same, it's... Uh, 
it's square, it can't be anything but. So that would be how I would do these. I glue them and then just slide them into place. That one goes there, that one goes there. That one goes there, that one goes there. Make sure they're right up to the ends. And then I put extra bands on the top and the bottom. And that's it. I will leave that until tomorrow. So, oh, wait a minute. What have we got? What a bum. Let me just put a bit on here. There you go. Done. I won't forget it now. Um, and that's how easy it is to glue something square and keep it square. The same principle works with polygons. So if you're doing a six-sided box, five-sided box, nine-sided box, it doesn't matter. Those rubber bands will do the trick. Robert, what kind of wood is that? Uh, this is Western Red Cedar is what I'm making the bees out of. Not making the bees out of, make the bee boxes. That's because it is easy, Matthew. <laughs> G'day, Jack. Thanks for dropping in. Um, so that's it. That's it. I'm happy with that. So tomorrow uh, I'll have this glued up. I'll have the other boxes done. And then I'll show you how to fit the tops and the bottoms. We'll fit the landing stage and we'll put the holes in it so you'll know what to do. And then you'll have a finished beehive. So that, that was great. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Um, thank you for welcome back to everyone that's welcomed me from Twitch and Facebook. Great to have the, the regulars on YouTube. Uh, this is a new experience for me, trying all these different platforms. But it seems to be working. So I've got to shoot up to the house now. Hope you enjoyed that. If there's any questions, I'll be on tomorrow, uh, possibly a bit earlier, about 9.30 Australia needs to standard time. And we can go on with part two of making the bee boxes and I'll have a picture of my hive uh, out there. This is what I'm doing at the moment. Let me just show you this to give you an idea. Oh! Um, okay, that's a stack of tops and bottoms for mine. There are some that I put together yesterday. There are more I've got to put together today and they'll all go out to Tim's, sugar bag bees. But what I'm showing you is the raw basics of making one. And, you know, Tim showed me a, a bee box he made 30 years ago out of Oregon. And it was made of the same construction style that I'm sharing with you now. And it is still together so it doesn't matter and the bees are happy that's the main thing so for everyone that's joined me thank you so much it's been an absolute privilege to be back on your screens again i thank you for your patronage your patience if you like what you see please hit the subscribe button on youtube and the what's the other one the um um, um it let you know bell buzzer thing when i'm streaming like me on Facebook if you do that. Uh, I've forgotten what Twitch do, but give me a like there. If you like, join whatever channel you're watching on, I'll appreciate it. And I will look forward to having your company in the workshop again at the workbench very, very soon. Till then, this is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying remember to keep it sharp. But more importantly, keep it safe, look after yourself, follow the rules, be creative, think of nice things, be kind to yourself and others, and... That's about it. So God bless for now. I'll catch you tomorrow in, uh, I would say, 20 hours time. All right. See you later. Bye for now.